Good evening to everyone from the Islamic Society. Uh, uh, my name is Hamza Javed. Uh, I'm the president of Islamic Society. Uh, I'm the next term. Uh, this is our first event, and the theme of the day evening is the importance of knowledge. Mashallah, we have four scholars here who will uh, discuss in their capacity the importance of knowledge in limited time. I will moderate it. Uh, the whole process, each panel member is given five to seven minutes for each topic, different topic they will cover. And now I will start uh, each other's program with the Quran citations by the Alhamdulillah. Thank you. 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 Thank إنا فتحنا لك فتحا مبينا ليغفر لك الله ما تقدم من ذنبك وما تأخر ويتم نعمته عليك ويهديك صراطا مستقيما وينفر ورك الله نصرا عزيزا هو الذي أنزل السكينة في قلوب المؤمنين ليزدادوا إيمانا مع إيمانهم ولله جنود السماوات والأرض وكان الله عليما حكيما ليدخل المؤمنين والمؤمنات جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها خالدين فيها ويكفر عنهم سيئاتهم وكان ذلك عند الله فوزا عظيما ويعذب المنافقين والمنافقات والمشركين والمشركات الظانين بالله الظانين بالله ظن السوء عليهم دا وغضب الله عليهم ولعنهم وغضب الله عليهم ولعنهم وأعد لهم جهنم وساءت مصيرا ولله جنود السماوات والأرض وكان الله عزيزا حكيما إنا أرسلناك شاهدا ومبشرا ونذيرا شاهدا ومبشرا ونذيرا لتؤمنوا بالله ورسوله وتعزروه وتوقروه وتسبحوه بكرة وأصيلا إن الذين يبايعونك إنما يبايعون الله يد الله فوق أيديهم فمن نكث فإنما ينكث على نفسه ومن أوفى بما عاهد عليه الله فسنه um, I recited according to the Riwayat Qanun, which is a very common Riwayat in North Africa, uh, mainly India and Tunisia, some part of Algeria and some part of Morocco and Mauritania. Um, now I'm going uh, briefly through some of the uh, English translations of the uh, verses I've recited. Uh,
uh, in the name of Allah, the most, the most kind, the most merciful. Um, verily, we have given you, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, a manifest victory that Allah may forgive you all your sins of the past and future, and complete His faith on you, is ever, or now, or always. That He may admit the believing men and women to gardens under which a river flow, to abide therein forever. And He may waive their sins, and that's with Allah a supreme success. And that he may punish the munafiqeen, the men and women, and also the mushrikeen men and women, who thinks evil thoughts about Allah. For them is a disgraceful tournament, and the anger of Allah is upon them. And he, and he has cursed them and prepared hell for them. And worse indeed is that destination. And to Allah belongs the host of heaven, of the heavens and the earth, and Allah is ever all powerful, all wise. Verily, we have sent you, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as a witness and as a warner, in order that all mankind may believe in Allah, His Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and that you assist and honor Him, and you glorify Allah subhanahu wa taala, praise morning and afternoon. Uh, thank you, brother and sister. Salaam. Now, uh, I will first introduce the panel, one by one, in no particular order. We have uh, Dr. Muhammad Atif Tahir. Uh, he's a research officer, uh, Center for Vision, Speech, and Signal Processing. Uh, he's working at the University of Surrey. Dr. Hisham, uh, lecturer in hospitality management. Again, uh, you can see he's all in the School of Management. Mr. Osama Khan, he's a lecturer in accounting and finance, also director. He will, uh, he will, he will say a few things about himself. Well. And Dr. Imran uh, Rafiq. This is the panel. Uh, mashallah, they were kind enough to actually give us some time. And uh, again, in no particular order, they have decided among themselves who will come first for the talk. The, it will be, uh, the, it will, the program will be like each person will speak for six minutes each, and after that, after 30, 35 minutes, we have a question and answer session. Each person, whoever has the freshest pack, they have the pens and they, ask, they have uh, some kind of flyers where they can write their questions to ask for each of the panel members. We, the question and answer session will be for 10 to 15 minutes maximum, and uh, then we will conclude for sisters, the food will be served upstairs, and for brothers, food will be served outside from this door. And we have some dates. Whoever wants some dates, you can give them. Just come uh, first come first, basically. So I will start uh, with the panel. Now. <coughs> Uh, actually, inshallah, I'm going to discuss about a little bit about Islam and uh, scientific progress, a uh, little bit, so just a few minutes. Actually, Islam has encouraged us to learn, read, write, and to research as well. Actually. And we have many proofs of the attitude of the religion of Islam towards education, learning, and scientific thinking. If we see the first verse that is revealed in the Holy Quran, say what means. Read in the name of Lord who created men from solid blood. This is certainly an invitation from the Holy Quran to the believers and people to think independently and critically. Independent thinking is an essential condition for creativity which is the first condition to scientific innovations and technological progress. Prophet ﷺ urged his companions to use their own judgment if they face problems to which there was no specific solution in the Holy Quran or the traditions of Prophet 
This encouragement of free judgment is a green signal that stimulates people to think, but without going against the principles of Islam. And finally, Prophet Muhammad Wasallam ordered people to record knowledge in him. As we know, Islam as a religion holds that science alone is not enough to bring real progress. For example, scientific findings and research do not always affect human life satisfactorily. For example, scientific research has shown that alcohol has a destructive influence on the brain, the digestive system, the heart, and the nervous system. Everybody who drinks alcohol knows that alcohol is destructive to physical and mental health. Although science has this scientific knowledge has not decreased the number of alcohol. On the contrary, the number of alcohol is increasing temperatures, increasing despite the findings of Islam science. Actually, science works successfully when it comes to the treatment of matter. But when it comes to human, human behavior, science cannot do much. It cannot overcome bad customs, but a true religion can easily do that. If we see the pre-Islamic times, people used to love wine. But when Islam prohibited drinking alcohol, wine was poured out on the streets, the movement, the prohibition was declared. If a person fully submits to Allah, he always incomplete. Finally, as we know that the Muslim scientists and scholars have contributed immensely to the human knowledge, especially in the period between the 48th and 19th century. Unfortunately, now uh, we do not have much contribution, but still our contribution has been largely in no forgetting and have gone unacknowledged. And finally, I will say that there is a aspect from Dr. Brunelia, a French MP, who embraced Islam. Revealing the reason of embracing Islam, he said, I read all the ayah, Quran verses, which have a relationship to medical, health, and natural sciences that I studied before and have a wide knowledge. I found these verses totally compatible with and gave a picture of a modern science. Thus, I embraced Islam as it was obvious that Muhammad revealed the absolute truth more than a thousand years ago. Had every specialist, artist, or scientific scientist compared those Quranic verses to his own, to his own specialization, Beyond the shadow of doubt, he would embrace Islam, especially if he has some mentality and goodwill to search for the truth and not a mentally effective person with the intentions of evil aims. Finally, the research intentions of study should be for humanity and hereafter and to prosper Islam as well. Uh, thank you. Uh, He's actually he's doing a PhD from Cambridge University these days, so but he will tell now. Please, your time to ask. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, I'm very honored and pleased by the fact that Islamic Society um, very kindly asked me uh, to share my expertise uh, with you, which is basically a study plan. Now, besides teaching accounting and finance at the School of Management, I'm also the director of undergraduate studies, so I'm kind of solely responsible, along with all my colleagues, including Dr. Al Sapahi, to look after the studies and the pastoral care of our students in the School of Management. And uh, I'm very glad that out of my six years of work here, I'm now getting a formal opportunity, Alhamdulillah, to share my expertise with my Muslim brothers and sisters. Um, and I'll, I'll try to keep my talk very short, and I have main five points to raise today, and of course then we will take the questions and answers. Uh, the first thing that I would like to talk about is planning. Now of course, whenever we talk about any principle in our life, whether it's related to studies, or whether it's related to religion, or faith, or our family life, we always go back to our Prophet And of course, who could be the best planner than our Prophet uh, he planned everything so meticulously that even 1,500 years after his prophethood, 
on the very day today in 21st century we are celebrating Islamic society events. And that's solely possible because he actually planned it all those years ago. And that's exactly how we individually should plan everything that we do in our life. So we should learn from the lessons of our Prophet and all his followers that planning is very important. So when you came here with an objective that you will earn a degree, whether it's undergraduate or postgraduate or PhD, we have to plan very meticulously. And when I talked about planning, you always have to have a long-term and a short-term plan. And the short-term plan could be as short as your day, and obviously a long-term plan in University of Surrey must be as long as your degree program, whichever degree that you're pursuing. So keep that in your mind that we have to plan. And there is no excuse planning meticulously in this era of technology. You can have an iPhone, you can have a PDA phone, you can have your email and everything. So there is every opportunity for you to plan. And alhamdulillah, we Muslims have to pray five times a day. And that actually makes our day very nicely divided into five parts. And we can plan even better. So please take that opportunity. My next point would be time management. One of the best things that we should do as representative of Islam during our study time in the University of Surrey is to portray to the rest of the community that what Islam preaches us and one of the things that it preaches us is the value of time. We are here in this world for a limited time we know and we have to sow the seed so that we can get to Jannah inshallah. And, and that is our objective. So time is very precious. So your knowledge that you're trying to seek from the University of Surrey has to be timed very precisely. You should not never be late in your lecture, in your lab sessions, in your tutorial. There is no excuse for any of us not to seek knowledge for the reason we are here today, by the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So please do not miss any lecture. One of the worst things we can do while studying is to decide that, oh, I'm a bit tired now and I'm not going to go to the lecture. Please do not do that. And that's the last thing we should do. We should always be timely, and we should never get any negative impression from our teacher that we are late or anything like that. The third thing I would talk about is the support system. There is fantastic support system in this university. So please know what sort of support you can get as an undergraduate, postgraduate, and a PhD student. When you're doing your PhD, it's not only just your supervisor who is supporting you. You can actually get support from all sorts of opinions. I'm not going to go through that support system, but there is very solid support system in regards to your studies, your welfare, your health, your emotional well-being, your faith, and everything. So seek for those support. Those supports are absolutely for you. So do not uh, deny yourself from those excellent support. Um, and then the other thing that I would like to talk about is seek knowledge as if like this is your last opportunity for seeking knowledge. We should always seek knowledge like that. The lecture that you attend, you should attend the lecture as if probably that is the last avenue for you to seek knowledge. Exactly like the way our Prophet asked us to pray, that you pray as if that is your last prayer. Exactly the same way, you seek knowledge as if this is your last opportunity to seek knowledge. So go for the excellence. If there is one book being prescribed by your lecturer, then go for 10 books to read if possible. The library is there, and you, we should all seek knowledge by spending a lot of time reading and utilizing the library. And of course, the other thing you should also remember, this is a golden opportunity for all of us to learn more about other faiths, other religion, and as well as other, other societies and cultures. So within the strict boundaries of Islam, we should also try to explore other societies, other human beings, how they live, what is their philosophy, and try to have dialogue, sensible dialogue, to see what we think as Muslim and what they think from their perspective. There is no point to be animated to each other or try to seclude ourselves completely. So we should explore and have dialogue. There is no point having degrees after degree from big universities if you did not manage to mix with people. We are all prophets like our Prophet We have to spread his message to everyone. Now, we not always manage to do that, but we have to do that. That's also part of the degree that you're doing here. So that's all I have to say. I, I hope all of you got a leaflet from myself, which is a little page where I have actually given you a lot of study material that might be helpful for you. They're very good study material.
with regards to if you're struggling with writing essay or exams and so on and so forth. And I also have given my office hours and details of my contact. I'm more than happy to support any, any one of you. If you knock on my door, send me an email with regards to anything to related to your studies, inshallah. Thank you very much. using 
um, the wider system and the subsystems to uh, maximize your benefit of your study here and to maximize your potential uh, for your research project. Uh, managing a research, a research project doesn't actually start uh, on the time that you are submitting a proposal for the research project, which usually happens for most students sometime in the second semester. Uh, and for undergraduate projects, again, around the same time, like late in the first semester or uh, early in the second semester. You need to start thinking early enough and you need to start familiarizing yourself uh, with the discipline area that you are going to be uh, researching. So make sure that you start your planning early enough. Make sure that you root your research uh, in previous research. Make sure that you don't start from scratch. Start from where others ended. Because this is something that we suffer from uh, as a Muslim Ummah and as Muslim countries. Uh, we don't usually uh, follow on from where uh, others and but we come and then we move everything and we start over. Okay, but this is not the way to do it. You need to educate yourself with what happened uh, in the discipline area that you are researching. Okay, and this will uh, formulate a very solid base for you uh, to approach your own research. Another tip is to communicate. Make sure that you communicate effectively with your tutors and with your research uh, supervisor or research uh, advisor all the time. And be honest. Okay? If there is anything that hinders your progress, go and discuss with, you, with your supervisor. Don't try to make excuses. Okay? Just be honest with yourself. Okay? And this is a way to establish good channels of communication and the way to uh, receive genuine guidance throughout your research project. Uh, you need to plan ahead. Uh, make sure that you create a number of deadlines for different stages of the research project. Okay. Don't only focus on the deadline for submitting the completed project. Okay, because uh, you need to set a number of sub deadlines for different stages. Because you don't want to waste most of your time doing things that are not really the most important part of the research. Okay? But you want to make sure that you allow sufficient time for what comes after. And indeed, some of the most important aspects of a research project is what comes in later stages. Uh, in my experience, a lot of students waste the, uh, most of their time, uh, the time that they are allowed to conduct their research project, in doing the early stages, uh, doing the literature review or thinking about the research uh, topic and so forth. Okay, these areas are very important, but later on uh, you will come uh, to the stage when you need to make data collection and you need to analyze your data. Okay? And these stages require special skills that uh, you want to make sure that you start developing them early enough because they take time. Okay? Avoid surprises. Okay? Make sure that you don't come to the data analysis stage and then start wondering, oh, I think when I see numbers, what I'm going to do about this? Okay? Make sure that you equip yourself early enough with everything you need to know, and you equip yourself with all the skills uh, required to complete your research to the end. Uh, a more general advice. You know, if you have something, a pot, and you have a big stone and a few smaller stones and a bag of sand, if you put the sand first in the pot, you wouldn't be able to uh, put the big stone or the, big, or the smaller stones. Okay, but if you put the big stone first in the pot and then pull the sand, okay, it will go around the stone. 
the message is big things first, okay? And while you are working on your research project, usually this is the biggest thing in your life after, of course, your religion and your family. Okay. So make sure that you give it uh, the priority it deserves. Okay. And fit other smaller things around it, not the other way around. Uh, also make sure uh, to put your emphasis on developing no, your knowledge rather than just getting a degree. Make sure that you put use a final project that would be something that you would be proud of. Something that is worthy keeping on your desk all the time. Something that is worthy showing to your children in the future. So approach your research with passion okay, and give it the importance it deserves. Yeah. Well, actually, this was the, the, the last thing actually I wanted to mention, and I wish you all the best of luck. Uh, may Allah help you all the research project. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have been in a, in a very uh, sort of good situation in the sense that I have been a student in this university for four years before I started my career here. So I may be able to talk a little bit more, being more in your position than I am now in my position here. So hopefully things will be a little bit uh, different from what we have talked a little bit earlier about. I have been asked to talk about uh, a student life, transition from student life to uh, a career life and of course the social aspects that fit around it. Okay? So I'll start with the uh, sort of career life. I think this is why most of us are here studying, doing, doing research, studying, uh, getting more knowledge that will help us sort of take that on board for our career lives. So the first thing, first tip that I would like to sort of give based on my experience is to definitely target your marketplace right now. You need to think yourself which area do you want to be in? Do you want to be in an academic life? Do you want to be as a researcher, uh, like some of the established ones here? Or do you want to go to industry? You need to know that right now so that you can plan your things accordingly, okay? If you want to go to industry, then you need to think about whether you like doing an office-based job or do you like doing a field-based job? Because all these things does matter, helping you choose which modules you are studying here, which subjects you want to take, which areas you want to focus yourself on. If you know these things now, it will definitely be better. It is your life that you're going to spend a good 20, 30 years of your life going in that specific area once you choose that. Now, don't choose something which you don't like. Okay? The next thing would be to know about, uh, about yourself as to your employability, how good you are in that area that you want to go and find your job about. Okay? Writing good CV is, is a skill, and nowadays we are not uh, no longer writing CVs just like an MSc from University of Surrey. It is no longer enough. We have to write competency-based CVs. We have to show that we already have the skills that the employer needs. Okay, and this is an art. This is a skill in itself. Where can you get help from? University career services here, a very good department here that we have at Surrey. Definitely go to them, definitely ask from them the information, how to write CV, how can I go for a job, how can I write a cover letter for a job. They are very good people there, they definitely want to help you only if you go there. Okay, so <laughs> emphasizing on the previous things that, that has been said already here, Knowing where to go, where the department is, who to talk to is very important here. Okay? The next thing I would like to say is that once you know which, what are your area of strengths, you need to then know how can I improve the areas which are not so strong. Okay? You need to make yourself a developmental plan. You need to plan ahead. And by developmental plan, I, I, what I mean is exactly what the, the brothers here have mentioned. Plan ahead. Start writing down what do you want to achieve in life in a short term and in the long term basis. Okay? You should have a plan on a daily basis for a week. You should have a plan on a weekly basis for a month. And you should have a plan 
for your study life, but you should also have a plan for your life uh, in, in long term. What do you want to be, do when you want to be in next five years time? Okay, this is the teaching of Islam have told us to do it that way. Don't do it just in your head, do it on paper. Make sure you revise it once you got past that deadline that you have already defined for a specific target. If you have not achieved it, think why you have not achieved it and try to rectify that so that you can achieve your next milestone, next deadline. Okay? Now, in terms of the social activities, I would like to say that the Islamic Society is a very good platform that you have here. They narrate a lot of activities. You should be, you should try your best to involve in that. Balance your life, not just for education, your career life, balance your life against the whole life, including your education, including your personal development, including your religion, including your cultural aspects. You have to take all of that package forward, not just one aspect for the for the years that you are here for. Okay? And for that you can meet with your friends, you can go out out with your friends, enjoy a good meal, you can come into the Islamic Society events, join other brothers and sisters, and of course uh, it will help you interact with others. Knowing others, it's also helpful for me to know myself. If I know how other cultures are working, if I know how other societies are working. Now, Alhamdulillah, we are here from many different societies, many different cultures. Being background is Muslim does not in itself mean that we are all following exactly the same line in our life. Okay? Islam gives us boundaries to operate, not necessarily this and this and this we should be doing on, on this part of the day. Okay? So we need to sort of interact with others to look, learn more about ourselves. And I think this is very important. Okay. Now, definitely keep your sports activities. It is another way of uh, interacting socially with each other. And also because we are sitting a good 80% of the day either listening to teachers or in front of computer making assignments. If we don't go to a physical activity based thing, it's, it's a problem for our body. We need, our body needs physical activity. We also need to make sure that we have a balanced life in that respect as well. So definitely try to have a sport activity or a physical activity of some sort which helps you help your body engage and gain this strength. And also keeps your mind away from studies or a certain coursework or an assignment that you have to do uh, and you're spending eight hours a day on that. Definitely moving it away helps you recapsulate uh, your thoughts on that and it helps you do a better job in, in that respect. Okay. So summarizing knowledge is important, but knowing where to get that knowledge from, knowing which facilities the university provides. University have got a very good support system, as has been mentioned earlier. You need to know where to go to, where can I get that help from, how can I improve myself, not just for career, but also for the personal development and then for myself in life. Okay. We'll take question and answer from the audience. I'll ask for the sound to agree. Oh, we have one question upstairs. Okay.